Hey, yo, Mina, it's Koei. Um, I'm going to be reading Sadoko and the Thousand Paper Cranes today, which is what inspired me to do this project for Peter Mon. Um, I read it a long, long time ago in like elementary school or something, so it's been a while since I've read it. So we're going to relive this together. And, you know, I thought it would be fun to try out like a different accent because you know I always love when they do audiobooks and like uh, British accents so let's have some fun and try to do a British accent for you guys um, I'm gonna read the prologue for you guys as well let's see if I can slip into it okay Sadako and the thousand paper cranes is based on the life of a real lit little girl who lived in Japan from 1943 to 1955. She was in Hiroshima when the United States Air Force dropped an atom bomb on the city in an attempt to end World War II. Ten years later, she died as a result of radiation from the bomb. Her courage made Sadako a heroine to children in Japan. This is the story of Sadako. Chapter 1. Good Luck Signs Sadako was born to be a runner. Her mother always said that Sadako had learned to run before she could walk. One morning in August 1954, Sadako ran outside into the street as soon as she was dressed. The morning sun of Japan touched brown highlights in her dark hair. There was not a speck of cloud in the blue sky. It was a good sign. Sadako was always on the lookout for good luck signs. Back in the house, her sister and two brothers were still sleeping on their bed quilts. She poked her big brother Mashiro, sorry, uh, Mas, Masahiro, Masahiro, get up lazy bones, she said, it's peace day, Masahiro, Masahiro, sorry it's not sh, sh, Masahiro groaned and yawned, he wanted to sleep as long as possible, but like most 14-year-old boys, he also loved to eat. When he sniffed the good smell of bean soup, Masa Masahiro got, got up. Soon Mits Mitsui and Eiji were, were awake too. Mitsui, M-I-T-S-U-E. Mi, 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 Mitsui. Suye, M I T S U E, Mitsuye, M E I J I, A G R E E, A I E, A G, A G, A G, A G, A G. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I want to get the names right. <laughs> Sadako helped A G get dressed. He was six, but some, but he sometimes lost a sock or a shirt. Afterwards, Sadako folded the bed quilts. Her sister, her sister, Mitsui, who was nine, helped put them away in the closet. Rushing like a whirlwind into the kitchen, Sadako cried, Oh, mother, I hardly can wait to go to the carnival. Can we please hurry with breakfast? Her mother was really, br <laughs> her mother was busily slicing pickled radishes to serve with rice and soup. She looked sternly at Sadako. You're 11 years old and you should know better, she scolded. You must not call it a carnival. Every year on August 6th, we remember those who died when the atom bomb was dropped on our city. It's a memorial day. Mr. Sasaki came from the back porch. That's right, he said. Sadako-chan, you must show respect. Your own grandmother was killed that awful day. But I do respect Oba-chan. 
Sadako said. I pray for her spirit every morning. It's just that I'm so happy today. As a matter of fact, it's time for our prayers now, her father said. The Sasaki family gathered around the little altar shelf. Obachan's picture was there in a gold frame. Sadako looked at the ceiling and wondered if her grandmother's spirit was floating somewhere above the altar. Sadako-chan, Mr. Sasaki said sharply. Sadako quickly bowed her head. She fidgeted and wriggled her bare toes while Mr. Sasaki spoke. He prayed that the spirits of their ancestors were happy and peaceful. He gave thanks for his his barber shop, he gave thanks for his fine children, and he, bra he prayed that his family would be protected from the atom bomb disease, disease called leukemia. Many still died from the disease, even though the atom bomb had been dropped on Hiroshima nine years before. It had filled the air with radiation, a kind of poison that stayed inside people for a long time. At breakfast, Sadako noisily gulped down her soup and rice. Masahiro sat, began to talk about girls who ate like hungry dragons. But Sadako didn't hear his teasing. Her thoughts were dancing around the peace day of last year. She loved the crowds of people, the music and the fireworks. Sadako couldn't, could taste the spun cotton candy. She finished breakfast before anyone else. When she jumped up, Sadako almost knocked the table over. She was tall for her age, and her long legs always seemed to get in the way. Come on, Mitsui time, she said. Let's wash the ditches so we can go soon. When the kitchen was clean and tidy, Sadako tied red bows on her braids and stood impatiently by the door. Sadako-chan, her mother, her mother said softly. We aren't leaving until 7.30. You can sit quietly until it's time to go. Sadako plopped down with a thud onto, onto the tatami mat. Nothing ever made her parents hurry. While she sat there for there, a fuzzy spider paced across the room. A spider was a good luck sign. Now Sadako was sure the day would be wonderful. She cupped the insect in her hands and carefully set it free outside. That's silly, Masahiro said. Spiders don't really bring good luck. Just wait and see, Sadako said gaily. Chapter 2, Peace Day When the family started out, the air was already warm and dust hung over the busy streets. Sadako ran ahead to the house of her best friend, Chizuko. The two had been friends since kindergarten. Sadako was sure that they would always be as close as two pine needles on the same twig. Chizuko waved and walked toward her. Sadako sighed. Sometimes she wished that her friend would move a little bit faster. Don't be such a turtle, she shouted. Let's hurry so we don't miss anything. Sadako-chan, Sadako -chan, go slowly in this heat, her mother called after her. But it was too late. The girls were already racing up the street. Mr. Sasaki frowned. Sadako is always in such a hurry to be the first that she never stops to listen, she said. Mr. Sasaki laughed and said, well... Did you ever see her walk when she could run, hop, or jump? There was a pride in his voice because Sadako was such a fast, strong runner. At the entrance to the Peace Park, people filed through the memorial building in silence. On the walls, there were photographs of the dead and dying in a ruined city. The atom bomb, the thunderbolt, had turned Hiroshima into a desert. Sadako didn't want to look at the frightening pictures. She held tight to Shizuko's hand and walked quickly through the building. I remember the thunderbolt, Sadako said, whispered to her friend. There was a flash of a million suns.
then the heat prickled my eyes like needles. How could you possibly remember anything? Shizuko exclaimed. You were only a baby then. Well, I do, Sadako said stubbornly. After speeches by Buddhist priests and the mayor, hundreds of white droves were freed from their cages. Doves, not droves, sorry. Hundreds of white doves were freed from their cages. They circled the twisted, scarred atomic dome. Sadako thought the doves looked like spirits of the dead flying into the freedom of the sky. When the ceremonies were over, Sadako led the others straight to the old lady who sold cup and candy. It tasted even better than last year. The day passed too quickly, as it always did. The best part, Sadako thought, was looking at all the things to buy and smelling the good food. There were stalls selling everything from bean cakes to chirping crickets. The worst part was seeing people with the ugly whitish scars. The atom bomb had burned them so badly they had no longer looked human. And if any of the bomb victims came near Sadako, she had turned away quickly. Excitement grew as the sun went down. When the last dazzling display of fireworks faded from the sky, the crowd carried paper lanterns to the bank of the Oto River. Mr. Sasaki carefully lit candles inside of six lanterns, one for each member of the family. The lanterns carried names of the relatives who had died because of the thunderbolt. Sadako had written Obachan's name on the side of her lantern. When the candles were burning brightly, the lanterns were launched on the outer river. They floated out to the sea like a swarm of fireflies against the dark water. That night, Sadako lay awake for a long time, remembering everything about the day. Masahiro was wrong, she thought. The spider had brought good luck. Tomorrow, she would remind him about that. Chapter 3 Sadako's Secret it was the beginning of autumn when Sanako rushed home with the good news. She kicked off her shoes and threw open the door with a bang. I'm home, she said. Tadaima! <laughs> her mother was fixing supper in the kitchen. The most wonderful thing has happened, Sanako said breathlessly. Guess what? Many wonderful things happened to you, Sanako chan. I can't even guess. <laughs> The big race, the big race on field day, Sadako said. I've been chosen from the bamboo class to be on the relay team. She danced around the room gaily, swinging her to the school bag. Just think, if we win, I'll be sure to get on the team in junior high school next year. That's what Sadako wanted more than anything else. At supper... Mr. Sasaki made a long speech about family, honor, and pride. Even Masahiro was impressed. Sadako was too excited to eat. She just sat there, grinning happily. From then on, Sadako thought of only one thing, the relay race. She practiced every day at school and often ran all the way home. When Masahiro timed her with Mr. Sasaki's big watch, Sadako's speed surprised everyone. Maybe she dreamed, maybe she dreamed, I will be the best runner in the whole wide school. At least the big day, at last, the big day arrived. A crowd of parents, relatives, and friends gathered at the school to watch the sports events. Sadako was so nervous. She was afraid her legs wouldn't work at all. Members of the other team suddenly looked taller and stronger than her teammates. When Sadako told her mother how she felt, Mrs. Sasaki said, Sadako-chan, it's natural to be a little afraid. But don't worry. When you get out there, you'll run as fast as you can. Then it was time for the relay race. Just do your best, Mrs. 
Mr. Sasaki said, giving Sadako hand a squeeze. We'll be proud of you. The kind words from her parents made the knot in Sadako's stomach loosen. They love me no matter what, she thought. At the signal to start, Sadako forgot everything but the race. When it was her turn, she ran with all the strength that she had. Sadako's heart was still thumping painfully against her ribs when the race was over. It was then that she felt her that she first felt strange and dizzy. She scarcely heard someone cry, your team, your team won! The bamboo class surrounded Sadako, cheering and shouting. She shook her head a few times and the dizziness went away. All winter, Sadako tried to improve her running speed. To qualify for the racing team in junior high, she would have to practice every day. Sometimes after a long, wrong, long run, the dizziness returned. Sadako decided not to tell her family about it. She tried to convince herself that it meant nothing, that the dizziness would go away. But it didn't. It got worse. Frightened, Sadako carried the secret inside of her. She didn't even tell Chizuko, her best friend. On New Year's Eve, Sadako hoped she would, could magically wish away the dizzy spells. How perfect everything would, we, would be if she didn't have the secret. At midnight, she was in her cozy bed quilts when the temple be bells began to chime. They were ringing out all the evils of the old year so that the new one would have a fine beginning. With each ring, Sadako drowsily made her special wish. The next morning, the Sasaki family joined crowds of people as they visited their shrines. Mrs. Sasaki looked beautiful in her best flowered silk kimono. As soon as we can afford it, I'll buy a kimono for you, she promised Sadako. A girl your age should have one. Sadako thanked her mother politely, but she didn't care about her kimono. She only cared about racing with the team in junior high. Amidst throngs of happy people, Sadako forgot her secret for a, a while. She let the bright joy of the season, season wash all her worries away. At the end of the day, she raced Masahiro home and won easily. Above the, above the door were good luck symbols. Mrs. Sasaki had put there to protect them during the new year. With a beginning like this, how could anything bad happen? Okay, I think we'll stop there for now, guys. So we're on chapter four, and we'll pick up uh, hopefully this week, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks for listening. Bye.